I'm John with Muldoon's Transmissions. On my workbench here, I have a 48RE rebuild kit. We receive a lot of inquiries about these rebuild kits when folks are rebuilding their transmissions. So I'd like to make an instructional video that explains what components go where and how to identify what components are in your kit. Now I'm going to start uh, from left to right and just describe what parts are what. And along the way, I'll explain certain identifiers that will help you put, make sure that you put the part in the correct place of your transmission. So to start off, this is your gasket kit. And this includes all of the, uh, you know, your paper gaskets, your rubber seals, your lip seals. It's got your oil pump, your oil pump seal. Uh, down here, you've got your um, extension housing seals here, dipstick seal, it's got all your O-rings, and basically all the seals needed to um, ensure that when you rebuild your transmission, all the seals are new. Um, it's got them for, you know, your forward piston, direct piston, low reverse servo, it's got your overdrive seals, any seal that you need is in this seal kit. Right aside. And I'd like to take uh, some time here to explain the forward clutch pack because um, on the 47RE transmission it's a little difficult to discern your 47RE forward clutch from your direct clutch. On a 48RE transmission it's really easy because a 48RE transmission you have a really fine count there on your internal teeth ear clutch. I believe it's a 93 tooth. Now, if I grab a forward clutch from a 47 RE, you can see there's less teeth. And you could also see how it could easily be confused with the direct clutch. Now, an easy way to identify your forward clutch from your direct clutch is to just take a simple measurement. So you want to get your calipers and your forward clutch is always around 65 to 68 thousandths. Somewhere in that 60 thousandths is going to be your, your way you identify your forward clutch. The same goes for your 48RE but as mentioned, it's much easier to identify because it has a 93 tooth uh, profile there on the inside. But once again, we could see this is 65 thousandths. When it comes to measuring your direct clutch, you're going to be more in the 80 thousandths area. This is 84, 85 thousandths. So that's something to always uh, check when you're rebuilding your transmission to make sure you're putting the right clutch back in the, in the correct component. One other thing I'd like to mention when you're rebuilding your forward clutch pack is there are two different style pistons that can be in your transmission. These transmissions are aging and they've been rebuilt a few times and it's possible that somewhere along the way somebody put the wrong piston and the wrong transmission. Now a 47RH transmission found in 94 to 95 models typically has a forward apply piston that measures 840 thousandths depending on, there you go, 840 thousandths. This style piston is compatible with this style Belleville spring you can visually identify this style Belleville spring by the profile of the uh, of the inside of the spring there. You see the tab is short. You want to run an 840 piston with a short tab early style Belleville spring. The Belleville, the, uh, the forward pistons changed in 96 with the RE units may measure 780 thousandths, well, somewhere around there, depending on the angle of your uh, calipers. This style piston is meant to be used with this style Belleville 
And if you look at the tabs on this Belleville, you can see the profile is different. They are a different cutout here, more like a puzzle piece, less round, and they have this longer tab. So that's something you always want to check when you're rebuilding your 47 or 48 transmission. You want to make sure you've got the right piston for the right Belleville spring. It is pertinent. They're really not to be interchanged. And here's a visual identifier, just a side-by-side -side of each Belleville spring. Now that I've explained that, I'd like to explain a couple other components we include in our kits that will help you set your clutch clearance. Uh, we include three snap rings for your forward or direct pack. We include two 74 thousandths snap rings, which we typically use these in the forward clutch pack. And we also include a 62 thousandths. If you can't get your clearance right, and you need to add, you know, another roughly ten thousandths of clearance, eight to ten thousandths, this snap ring is going to be thinner and give you a little more clearance. Now typically, when you assemble your forward clutch pack, you will run four of your sixty thousandths clutches and three of your thin steels. So just like the clutches have different thicknesses, your steels do as well. A thin steel measures 66 thousandths, 65 thousandths, and a thick steel measures roughly 85 thousandths. Now what we do in our rebuild kit to help you set your clearances up is we include some additional thin steels you really only need three thin steels inside of the forward clutch pack, but we include six in the event that you need to play with your direct drum clearance. And ideally, we like to set them up with all thick steels for heat dissipation purposes. But if you can't get the clearance set right, we advise setting the thin steels first and setting the thick steels last because the heat typically goes to the end of the clutch pack. So we include six of your thin steels and six of your thick steels. We also include those, um, a couple different snap ring sizes for you to play around with your um, direct drum clearance. And we include this cut plate. This is a pressure plate. We include this to uh, get an additional clutch there on your direct drum. Now moving over here, we've got your overdrive brakes. We include the necessary amount of clutches to put that back together. Our philosophy is to keep the spring snap ring in the back and run a full thickness pressure plate. Running a cut pressure plate with high pressure can eventually lead to a broken pressure plate. And we've seen it enough times that we don't want to take that risk anymore. So we advise just running a you know, five or six clutch count overdrive brake. These are GPZ clutches. Uh, for the, the, the GPZ clutches that are thicker, you have to run five. If you're able to get the Alto G3 clutches, you can run six and run a uh, uncut pressure plate. And then we've got the overdrive direct clutches over here. These typically never fail. This is the overdrive direct snap ring. Always replace this. This is a commonly known failure point. Always broken. There's an 800 pound spring that's typically pressing against this. Uh, whenever you're not in overdrive, this has the pressure of an 800 pound spring against it. So it's always under a lot of stress and premature failures occur with these really often it's always wise to replace it. Obviously, this is your second gear band. Uh, this band is usually almost always worn out on the cores that come in, so always replace that and make sure to keep it adjusted. We've got your oil pump and direct drum bushings here. Two common areas that are always worn. And 
Over here we've got a low reverse band. This is optional. Many times this band is in good shape and it's not needed uh, to be replaced, so we advise checking that. If you just want to cover all the bases before you place the order for your rebuild kit, you can just get one. Overdrive bearings. There's three Torrington bearings in that transmission in the 47 and 48. And with the age that these transmissions are, if these bearings have not been replaced, it's always a good idea to replace them. Uh, if you know they've been replaced at some point in time, it's not a typical failure. So you can opt out of those if you know you've got good ones in your transmission. Uh, this is part of the overdrive bearing of the overdrive bearing kit, and this is the thrust plate on the back of the overdrive. Uh, this Torrington bearing rests on there, and we find that there's typically a groove worn into these. These are almost always worn, so it's it's wise to replace this. The filter, uh, that's another optional thing. Say you get a new valve body. New valve body from us comes with a filter, or maybe you just want to have a spare. You can always add that to the kit. That's an optional part. And whenever you buy the rebuild kit from us, we have a checklist of the items that are fulfilled with our recommended clutch clearances. You can see our forward clutch pack, we recommend 20 to 35 thousandths, direct clutch 80 thousandths, overdrive brake to piston is 100 thousandths. Um, you check that by assembling your overdrive and um, you can either measure with a set of calipers or you can use a 100 thousandths drill bit to check the clearance between the piston and the uh, last overdrive brake steel. And then your final assembly end play, we like to see 30 to 40 thousandths. We've also got your band adjustment guidelines on there too. And one component I forgot to mention is your thrust washers. We also include thrust washers for your intermediate shaft gear train. Uh, these are commonly worn out. They're made out of like a brass material and uh, we include those in the rebuild kit. They also have the selective, I call them Mickey Mouse washers, but these washers go on the back of the input shaft to help you configure uh, the end play on your transmission. So they come with the selectives there, and you know, that helps you, that helps you to set your, your final assembly end play. So those are all the parts that come in our rebuild kit, and you know, I hope this video helps you to identify what parts go where. Uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion between these two clutches and configuring, you know, the thin steels, the thick steels, where does, where does this go, what do we do? So uh, we'll include this video on, uh, on our rebuild kit uh, checklist over there for you to reference and uh, yeah, use it as a guideline to put your transmission together. If you have any questions about our rebuild kits or transmission parts we sell, please feel free to contact us. Thanks.